Hello and welcome to your Living a Course in Miracles audio book club call. This is Jared Krebs coming at you live from San Antonio and I am super excited about today's call because we're going to be discussing these five short videos from Kenneth Wapnick that I just watched this afternoon and they're awesome and I can't wait to discuss them with you. Uh, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, hello, and look us up on Living a Course in Miracles Audio Book Club on Facebook. And uh, let's get started. Uh, so we always start by everyone saying, their, tell us your name, where you're calling in from, and why you're excited about today's call. I'll go first. All right. So I'm Angela, and I'm in Austin, Texas, in my car, obviously not driving. Um, and I'm really excited to be back after a number of months not in the group, so that is really happy. Yay! Welcome back! Yay, thank you! <laughs> All right. Thank you, Angela. Who's next? Hey, it's Randy, <laughs> Randy Krebs from Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, I also in, uh, listened to all of the YouTubes this afternoon and uh, just happy to shed myself of my ego and always have love and forgiveness in my heart. Yes. Great job, Dad. Yes. Christian, Christian gives you the muscles. <laughs> all right. Who's next? This is Mom. Mom. This is Viola, Salt Lake City. I am happy to be here. So I can Good job. You you kind of broke up there, Mom. Not sure what's uh -oh. going on there, but we heard we heard uh, we heard what you said. So thank you for being on, and excited to be chatting with you today. <clears throat> yeah, great to see you, Viola. Uh, Christian Stanbury, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'm excited about today's call because I almost didn't make it, but I made it. And of course, to be forgiven by Nathan. Yes, to be forgiven by Nathan. That's right. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. All right, Nathan or Linda. Hey, this is Nathan Lively in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I'm excited to be here to talk about these videos and to forgive you guys. Sweet. Thank you, Nathan. Cheers. Cheers to forgiving us. And cheers to you, Nathan. <laughs> All right. And Linda from Lancaster. Oh, we don't hear you, Linda. Might have to unmute yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. There you okay. go. Yeah, I'm doing good. I love reading the course of meals and doing the daily steps. They've been an inspiration in my life that they're getting rid of the chatter of it and space in my head for over 39 years. So it's the course of meals was the best book of my life. And I highly recommend it. And I'm glad to hear be here because I'm 56 years old. I'm still learning new things every day in my life. Thanks for the audio books. I saw the videos and they're great. Thanks. Awesome, Linda. Thanks for being on. I want to acknowledge you for doing a little write-up on each video and you just posted it. Great job. Thanks. Yes. Awesome. Look forward to hearing from you. Okay. Well, let's get started. Let's get right into it. Um, I want to give a shout out to Kelly Conley. Um, who has made a Kenneth Wapnick playlist of all of our videos. So if you are wanting to have it be like in a perfect little YouTube playlist where it just plays one after the other, uh, Kelly posted a link in our uh, Living a Course in Miracles audiobook face Facebook group. And um, I pulled it up here because it's a great way to, uh, to access these videos. And I want to give a big shout out to Nathan Lively for choosing the videos this week. Thank you, Nathan. Great job. Really appreciate you. And uh, let's get right into it. So here's a screenshot of the videos. And I'm just going to share kind of what comes to my mind from what I learned from each one of them. I didn't take notes, but um, 
but it is pretty fresh in my mind. So the first one, discerning between the mind's two voices, uh, that definitely um, was cool because there's the voice of the ego and then there's the voice of the Holy Spirit. But Ken was like, a better question. Oh, Linda, can you go on mute? I'm going to mute you there. Okay. There we go. I just muted you. Um, Linda, I'm sorry. Ken, Ken says a better question to ask is a better question to ask is why am I not doing what the Holy Spirit's telling me what to do or telling me to do? And uh, so, you know, which is forgive. And that was really cool just to hear him say that. Um, that's what stood out for me on that video. The second one, level confusion. I mean, he got pretty hardcore there because he talked about the metaphysics of the course and uh, the, the how, how the on, on there's one level of the course, which is the metaphysical, and then the second level is like this, this kind of false reality that we live in. But uh, he kind of talked about those two. I don't remember everything about the level confusion one except just that it's pretty hardcore. Um, the third one is kindness, and uh, kindness is, is definitely um, a, a really good one because it was like asking for the Holy Spirit's help to forgive, and that was the main thing I got from that one. Um, the one on judgment was, um, that's kind of talked about like the heart of the ego, and it was kind of cool see, oh, that's how we did be, uh, be uh, to, to, to side with the, the ego and, uh, we're constantly, we're judging machines. So that was interesting. Um, so uh, it, on my end, you're just cutting out a little bit there, Jared. Yeah, same here. You're cutting out a lot. Get your act together, Jared. <laughs> that doesn't sound like forgiveness, Nathan. <laughs> Are you judging his judgment? I, you're damn right. I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm judging we're, your judgment of his judgment. We're in the same boat, hey? <laughs> Um, so it appears we're, uh, Jared's going to come back. <clears throat> How do you go? All right. Hey, Linda. All right. Um, so the videos, uh, he was kind of saying them backwards, it kind of seemed, kind of thing. Just a little thing, because Ke uh, I remember him asking Kelly to put the, videos upside down so it sounds like he started from the top and was kind of going backwards but not a big difference the same six videos um so the first one he's talking about was discerning between uh the mind's two voices <clears throat> uh jared's back just gotta unmute yourself there buddy Hey guys. Hey. Hey. So there's my first forgiveness lesson of the session. Cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, was somebody already in the middle of sharing by the time I came Not back? Really. Not really. If you, you still have two more videos to go. Okay. All right. I'll get right to it. Um, so self-sabotage was interesting because it's really like the ego's way of saying I'm alive. I'm an ego, I'm an ego body. Look at how much pain I'm in or look at how I just screwed myself over or whatever, I'm real. And, but at the very end, it said, ask the Holy Spirit's help. It said, ask the Holy Spirit's help to choose again. So I like that he gives us a way, like something to do that's kind of in the positive or you know, like it's not just like leaving us in a mess. Like, okay, yeah, maybe that is self-sabotage, but here's what you do about it, you know? Ask the Holy Spirit for help. Um, I Need Do Nothing is, was also a really great one for, um, that one was, was more about doing stuff with, remember he said not having a, with a serene forehead, a serene forehead. And um, I do good most of the time, 
But then there's times where I'm like, ah. And um, so I feel like if I can even catch myself once or twice where I can actually, in those moments where my forehead goes like this and I'm not, if I can just do that maybe one or two times, how big that would be. You know, I had some very peaceful moments this week. I'll share with that later, but like, um, I'm still definitely needing, dealing with like ego stuff all the time <laughs> and worries and stuff like that. So, but man, if I can just do a little bit, just a little bit, I'm going to celebrate that. I'm going to celebrate that because I don't care. I'm going to do this until it happens all the way. All right. That's all I got. Who's next? Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right um i guess i'll go next because i kind of already started uh <clears throat> so yeah my big highlight for that video uh discerning between the minds two voices was the same as yours jared um that like um it's like a better question would be like instead of like oh how do i tell between the holy spirits and the ego's voice a better question would be like um, why don't I do what he says so that I can hear him better so that I can like be able to like just automatically know you know um, because the focus is on the wrong place and the other uh, asking like how to tell the difference so it's like saying like oh I've done enough work already so I should already be able to tell and it's kind of like lazy I think <clears throat> and yeah I've been there for a long time I just asked this question yesterday to myself, like, how do I get past my resistance? Why don't I do what the Holy Spirit asked me uh, so that I can be happier and stuff? So, um, mm -mm 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 -mm. what you really want is the experience of love. So that was another highlight in that video. So next video, level confusion. Level one, uh, no compromise. That's, that's in the course, in A Course of Miracles, level one is basically, uh, like the definitive statements uh if there is god there is no pain if there's pain there is no god very clear metaphysics um there is no world exclamation mark that's a definitive statement no compromise level two practical level uh on the world um and the ego's use of the world or level two would be like attack and judgment and the holy spirit's uh use of the world is to see it as a classroom and where we practice forgiveness and if i truly practice i will be truly caring and you know um and asking jesus or the holy spirit help to look at things differently and one one little thing i put here i'm not sure if ken said it but level two is also where the course speaks in metaphor you know um like this is a purely non-dualistic path god doesn't have a body it's not a he it's not a she but it uses a metaphorical sort of like um biblical language um and in that sense that's sort of like level two and stuff you know god cries for us misses his children and stuff that's metaphor um it's meant to be taken that way <clears throat> next video video number uh three four whatever yeah 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 uh, kindness um, we are the same and every situation oh I really like this one this is important guys don't don't miss this we are the same but also every situation is the same because it gives us the opportunity to forgive you know like there there is no uh, order of difficulty in miracles or problem solving because it's all the same that's the idea of generalizing and seeing it from a bigger picture, right? Rather than all specific and worried about little things or different things, might not be little on this level, but but like uh, it's all the same. It, it really is, it's really simple. Like uh, when you step back and you're like, no, everything's for forgiveness. It just makes it a lot easier and 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 gets, gets more results quickly. Uh, judgment is the next video, that's what it's called, <clears throat> from Ken Wetmick. Um, Judgment is very difficult to let go. Again, we are all the same. Thanks, Nathan. All the videos uh, are related yet again. <clears throat> Next video, self-sabotage. 
which is so dear to our ego, especially mine. I sabotage myself left, right, and center, damn it. But, but, I, but <laughs> the way to get out of that sort of cycle is to practice forgiveness, practice what he's teaching, you know? Well, if I'm so sick of my self-sabotage, then start doing what the Holy Spirit is asking you to do, you know, because that's going to undo the thought system that creates the self-sabotage. Uh, if there is God, there is no pain. If there is pain, there is no God. Um, so self-sabotage is a way of proving that I'm a body and that it's not my fault. And I love how he goes into the examples of like, oh, blaming this, blaming that. It's my parents. It's my genes. I love, it's the cosmos. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> 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 so when... When so we like to say so then I want to go a little further with that like why would why would I want to like prove that I'm a body and say that it's not my fault what does that mean well basically it serves the purpose of supporting the original idea of uh, separating from God so it supports the insane ego thought system to to kind of like blame someone else and and perceive myself as a victim and stuff like that so, and then uh. And then that helps the ego to continue to exist by proving that it's not my fault. Okay, so that's covered. So then the next video is called, I need do nothing. Um, whatever we do, we do it peacefully. The only problem is in our minds, not outside there. I need to do something, I need to do something. No, it's not out there. Again, generalize it, it's really simple. Uh, it, it's like, it, you know, it's, like, I was just saying, generalizing that everything is the same because it gives us the opportunity to forgive. Everything's the same because the only problem is in our mind. Choose again. Uh, be normal and peaceful, and that's it. I love it. Yay. Well done. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's next? I can go, but I have to go back and forth between my little notes, and so you'll like see nothing, and then I'll come back. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I can, I'll remember as much as I can when I'm looking. So, um, you guys, the discerning between the two voices basically said mine, um, like the question of, you know, like why aren't you just forgiving, and then you can hear it better, and that's like, that's more the thing, because everything is going to be forgiveness. Um, I didn't have any, I don't think I have any special notes for two of them. Let's see. You can hear me, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I didn't have any notes for level confusion. Oh, wait. Weird. Okay. Level confusion or kindness. Um, just because I was like, okay, yeah. I kind of basically wrote down the ones that um, I was like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you know? So let's see. Um Let's see. For judgment, um, I liked the quote from the course, from the text. I said, you have no idea the deep release and the peace that will come when you completely relinquish judgment. And it just, like, really spoke to me, like, wow, yeah, that's, I want that. <laughs> that sounds nice. And then... Um, I mean, this is obvious, but at the same time, it's just kind of like, oh, um, relinquishing judgment is basically forgiveness. So, I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, let's see, um, uh, the, the I Need Do Nothing video, um, I really liked the shifting of, he added, I need do nothing by myself. That makes it a little bit more specific for me, I feel like, yeah, don't, like, go out and, like, do things, like, you need to make sure that you're aligned with the divine when you're doing stuff, like, you, yeah, that made more sense to me. Um, uh, hmm? Oh, okay, I didn't say nothing. I heard, like, a sound, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, what was the other one? Dang it, I forgot already. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. The judgment and like the re reassertion of just like do everything as everybody else does, but just do it with a different purpose. So that was cool. Um, and then the self sabotage one was the 
I'm going to like, I have so many notes, but I feel like I can just speak to it because I'm right there with you, Christian. Like, I'm so great at it. <laughs> and honestly, I was telling Christian before we even started videoing this, um, it's for basically the reason, well, one of the reasons that I haven't been here for a few months. Um, it started off as me being in shows and having rehearsals and stuff, but then I just, I got out of the habit and the ego was like, I mean, you don't need to do that. Like, you can go do this other thing and that'll be fun. And like, they'll be there, whatever. Like, you don't have to do that. And just coming up with all these different reasons why I shouldn't come on. I like was still forgiving everything and still doing the work but for some reason the ego was like no <laughs> don't go <laughs> um I really liked the quote being born is one of the most self-destructive things we can do <laughs> and I was like oh <laughs> like how do you oh you know <laughs> and then uh like, I liked all the examples, too. Like, Christian said, we eat the foods we know will hurt us. We know we'll be happier if we do the course, but we don't do that. It's like the ultimate. Oh, yeah. I added, um, self-sabotage is kind of like the ultimate form of rebellion. It's like, that's what it feels like to me. It feels kind of like, oh, no, I know I need to do these things. But, I mean, nah, I don't, I don't need to do that. Like, so, let's see. What else do I have in here? Um, enjoying someone else hurting us. Um, we have a strong need to hurt ourselves because if there's pain, then there's, then we exist. That's still, that concept, like, I get it, but not completely. Like, it doesn't, it hasn't sunk in yet, but I'm sure I will. I'm sure it will later. All right, those are my thoughts. Love it. I, I really, I do, I do remember that part where he's like, yeah, having a body is like the ultimate you know, rebellion or the ultimate, like, F you to God. <laughs> it's yeah, like, I know. I mean, I just the well. fact that we think we're here, right? Yeah. But then also, like, at the end of the day, the only thing we can do about it is forgiveness. And the only thing we can do to get back home and, and just to be normal. You know, like, uh, I need to do nothing. That's right. Flex and be normal. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, dang, Christian. Good job. Uh, <laughs> so um thank you angela phenomenal phenomenal glad you're back yay thanks me too yes and don't feel guilty don't feel guilty that you missed our calls for so long just forgive that too right right yes right. Yeah. yeah i mean i i recognize as things are going on i was like well i mean this is definitely part of the path where you're just kind of going no i don't want to do that and then eventually sure go, right, well okay. just feeling guilty though is, is, is part of the ego strategy mm -hmm. you know but you know that right. you rock yeah. yeah i've forgiven <laughs> myself many times <laughs> <laughs> right awesome thank you angela you're welcome all right who's next me mama's next i'm on well i go get my power cord because i'm like at uh 15. okay all right. Nice shades. Nice shades, Mom. What's that? Nice shades. nice shades. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, discerning between the mind's two voices. Um, you are, you're looking for a specific experience of love to forgive. You're not looking for a specific answer. And you draw up the answer that you want, and then you think you're hearing the Holy Spirit. That's part of the confusion. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's confusing. Yeah, that, that happened to me this week, actually. If you don't mind, I'll quickly just say something okay. about that. Um, and, and it kind of was clarified when I just checked out the video just now, is that like, um, I kind of thought something came from the Holy Spirit, but later I found out it was the ego and then Ken kind of confirmed it for me right now. And it was basically just like a diet plan, but it was like <clears throat> that I was reading through like this thing and it was like, it was like the perfect diet in my eyes. Like I, 
it's just like almost exactly what I've researched for diets and it exactly listed exactly to the letter, like even caffeine intake of like the diet that I think is like the perfect diet. And, and, and I'm like, Oh wow. So I'm going to do it then, you know? And then, then that night, like, <laughs> and I also decided it'd be a great idea to cold Turkey, no alcohol too, you know? And then like, and later I'm hanging out with my friends and I felt so deprived and like, I was like, ah, oh, like I, I want a glass of wine too, you know? And like, so it didn't feel too good and stuff. So it, what seemed or appeared to be the Holy Spirit was really my own ego. And like how you just said, Viola, it's like, it's like I created that, you know, in a sense. So it, not that there's anything wrong with doing a great diet and everything, but if I'm feeling deprived and, or forced or, you know, anything like that, then the ego is definitely involved. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Um, the level of confusion. Okay, so this is the one that had me a little confused. It's like you have pain. If you have pain, you don't believe in God. If you have no pain, you believe in God. So I was like saying, am I like vacillating between believing in God and not believing in God? Because with the first, first set of chemos, I was not in that much pain. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing the course, that's probably why. And now with the second, second round with a different chemo, I'm like, oh my God. I have so much pain. Like, how come, how come I can't go back to like Jesus, how Jesus didn't feel pain. And then I, I heard on this, you don't believe in God. So it really kind of freaked me out. And I thought, man, it's better to be Christian. <laughs> Not Christian Stanberry, but Christian. <laughs> because, because I thought, at least you can pray for help. You can have people pray for you. You can... You can ask God for help. I'm like, the course sucks. You have to just be like, I don't believe in God anymore. I'm in pain, folks. And, you know, maybe that's how they view me. And maybe not. But I got to the point where I had to call Pablo. You guys know Pablo? And Pablo was awesome. He explained it in a really good way. And... Basically, he talked about the uh, forgive. So you just need to have a relentless forgiveness. And it doesn't really mean in a literal way, because that's the level two. The level one would be like, yeah, just how I explained it. But the level two is pain is the psychological I'm, it's real, I'm pushing God out of existence when you have pain. And we po focus on pain that is real. So God is not real. We're focusing on that pain. So you remind yourself you're experiencing a dream, unconscious and sin, guilt and fear, remembering it's a dream and our job is maintenance. Work at the level of mind, you are one with God and you just practice forgiveness on that whole thing. So you just have to do that over and over. But anyway, that was kind of, kind of sucky. I have to really give my mom a lot of credit. Mom, awesome that you reached out to Pablo and you spent, I was on that call. It was an hour with Pablo. I mean, Pablo went down like he gave it all and it was so cool and like when you're confused or when you're like feeling down about something especially course related like way to go on solving it and not just closing it off you know um and he acknowledged all of your progress like you wouldn't have even done all what you've done in the course doing all the workbook lessons all the reading of the all entire text of the course um, including the manual for teachers and everything else. I mean, you've really like killed it. So, um, kudos to you on, on reaching out and being like an awesome course student. That's super inspiring. Thank you. So it says to, it's impossible to deny physical experience of the world. So you got to still live it. You got to still feel that pain. And you bring Jesus and ask him to feel, to help you feel it differently.
Um, you guys covered everything else. Yeah. And number five, I need to do nothing. Don't identify the problem and do something about Can't it. Can't hear you very well, mom, all of a sudden. Okay, I'm sorry. Is that better? Yeah, just I think just project out a little more to the, com the computer. And, uh, on number five, I need to do nothing better and whom we do it with. So don't identify the problem. Because our ego is always identifying these problems and then doing something about it on our own. Do it with Jesus, our teacher, and it'll be much easier. Awesome. That's it. Thank you, Mom. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go next since we're up. Can, can you hear me okay? Yes. I think first of all, you know, I, uh, on the first one, discerning between the mind of two voices, you know, thank you, Nathan, for bringing that one up because that was one question I had for Gary Renard when we do our coaching sessions. So that actually saved a lot, <clears throat> you know, saying that, you know, I always thought that, how do I know what I'm hearing is either my ego or the Holy Spirit? So that that's basically, you know, my ego taking it over, you know, just practicing. Yeah, we, re we really don't hear you very well. Uh -oh. I'm gonna have this closer. Okay. Right here. That's what happens. Is that better? Better, better, better. Okay. And so on the. So anyway, thank you, Nathan, for bringing that up. That just you know helped answer that question because that was my. That's always kind of been my question on whether. What am I hearing, my ego or the Holy Spirit? On the level of confusion, um, if you practice the course, you end up being very caring, loving, etc., to others. All sicknesses are a call for help. All pain is a call for help. But people are not asked to deny what is happening. Uh, you bring Jesus into your experience and ask them to help. You look at it differently and feel differently. And that, and that just falls definitely in where uh, Viola is now with what's going on. You know, she's in the pain, but she's, you know, bringing Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We ask that almost every night and the unknown angels to come down and help. So, uh, kindness, the general rule, of course, is always try to be kind to others because they are suffering just as we are. But that, uh, you know, that, that is so true. Under judgment, um, anyone outside of us that is a source of our happiness or pain, you know, it, then we are making that judgment. You know, we talked about special love being a source of our happiness, but that goes, you know, away if that same person hates for an instant. So special love goes right out the window. So basically practice that we are all the same, awaken from this guilt, share same aspiration, aspir aspirations to awaken from the dream. So um, I need do nothing. Uh, same way, smile, smile and be peaceful. Def definitely, you know, shift the focus from the body to the mind. You know, we are all the same. We choose to see peace. Everyone is the same. And then under self-sabotage, um, you know, you know, talks about the food we eat, the clothing we wear, the things that we do. We're basically, you know, creating that self-sabotage. You know, we recognize that we have a tremendous need to hurt ourselves through depression, pain, etc that prove that you exist, your ego, that you exist. And uh, comes down to purpose. If I can see my purpose, I can choose again. That was my highlights from the five. Man, you nailed it. And I really love what you said about um, 
Whoa, you ty- did you type that out? Whoa. Well, I try to write, but I can't read my writing. Damn. So as I, as I, and I can type faster than I can write. And, and so, yeah. Everybody give my dad some biceps right there. Biceps. Great job. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Hey, uh, oh, look, Christian's got notes too. Damn, y'all. Cool. I, have notes. I tried to make it legible today, but yeah. Um, I, I really like what you said about how a uh, common interest, you know, like everybody has uh, the same wrong mind and the same right mind and everyone has the same need to awaken from the dream and to look at, you know, and everybody has a struggle. Like even if you're sick or not sick or whatever's going on, like be kind because really everybody is struggling in some way. And, uh, just, just, uh, that common, you know, looking at your brothers and sisters, as you and with a common interest and seeing the sameness you just totally jogged my memory on all that it's like oh that's good stuff it's good these are good thank you nathan yes thank you nathan oh you're welcome you want to take it nathan yeah so i have some highlights from the videos so from the first one what you want is not an answer to a question but an experience of love and I was like, Ken, you know me so well. It's true. Uh, from the second video, I really like um, these two separate experiences. So we can either choose to see this world through the ego and see it as a prison from which we'll never escape, or we can choose to see it with the Holy Spirit and have it be a classroom. And that just, really nailed it for me because I can so many times look back and think about times where I was really suffering and feeling like, you know, it was a prison from which I would never escape. Kindness. Um, We think we're unkind. Oh yeah, because we thought we were unkind with God and that he's coming to get us and we project that unkindness now out onto others. But I guess the biggest, my biggest takeaway from that one was stopping all the negative thoughts that we have about ourselves and others. Stop it. (laughs) Um, Judgment. We have sinned against our creator. We judge ourselves for it. We project that judgment out. We believe God will do this to us. We believe God will do to us what we secretly believe we did to him. Um, And then, yeah, I also liked from I need do nothing. I need do nothing on my own. I thought that was really helpful. And nothing has the power to take away the love and peace of God from us. And then self-sabotage, nothing's ever my fault. That's it. Man, I, I love how everyone's sharing because it's like I'm I'm recalling different things from each person. Like what you just said about nothing's ever my fault. I don't think we've heard that yet. And it's so true with self-sabotage that we're basically trying to find someone else to blame so that we can not be guilty. Thank you, Nathan. Or, or if, um, like you cut your finger or something, not that you want to blame someone, but it's just like you cut your finger because you're sabotaging yourself. Yeah. Or, or we want to blame ourselves. It's either one we're blaming. Linda, 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 what were your highlights from the videos? And, um, I, I just unmuted you. Oh, okay. And from the um, first one, let me get to it. The Holy Spirit within you says to forgive the other person and to let go and let God. Treat the other person how you like to be treated, like it says in Luke 6, 31. The level of confusion, well, I prefer metaphysics, 
Um, I haven't experienced that whatever happens to life will just happen, good or bad, you know? It's a great idea that you want to keep it as positive as you can in your life, whatever the situation is. Life is a learning lesson. No matter what, where, who, or why, your God is a loving God, and He would give you lessons that can make you better, and that's if you want to. The thing is, I'm not perfect either, so I do the best I can like everybody else, right? And with kindness, what is yeah. Are you able to go somewhere else without the background noise? Because we can't really understand you. I can't. I'm in a waiting room. And oh, you are. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Best you can. All right. With kindness, life is like a job. And it says in Luke 30, 631, treat others how you like to be treated. I know a person can take so much, but just understand that others have their own issues and pain that they are suffering from too. That's why I learned here in California and especially through the Course of Miracles. In New York, I mean, what I experienced in New York, you are on your own, honey. I mean, life is so tough in New York. I hope to God that they have a Course of Miracles in New York. That's my opinion, but I'm questioning that too. Hey, hey, Linda. I'm going to have to have you uh, just post it or, or, or something. I love what you're saying. It's just the, the kids are, are a little too distracting. I know. I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank I you. did post it, though. I did. Yeah, you did. Definitely. Maybe we can copy paste it back up to the top or something so everyone can read it. All right. Thank you, Linda. Okay. Let's do forgiveness in the field, folks. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of us. Oh my God, in only 13 minutes. That means we have like two minutes. We have two minutes per person. All right, let's go. I'm gonna start and go. Okay, so forgiveness in the field. Um, well, I have, I'm gonna use my two minutes a little differently. I wanna just celebrate here. I finished chapter 22 of Ken's book. Tw chapter 22, look at this. I read, look, look how special I am. Look how much I've read. So I'm like, I'm like totally digging it. I'm like so proud of myself that I, I read this because this is hard, man. It takes me an hour just to read two pages. Oh, Christian, rock star, you're special too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hell yeah. So, oh, look at that. One through eight, Bala, volume one. So this is like, I was like so jazzed. I even put it on my Instagram story. Like I'm jazzed I read this, man. This is the Holy Spirit's thought system. I'm pumped up about it. All right, so that's my first minute. I have a minute left now. Um, so my last, my, my forgiveness lesson stuff has just been around like finances and budgeting because we just moved to this new place. It's freaking awesome. And uh, we, spent, we spent a couple grand on just, you know, getting set up at the new place. And um, now it's like there's a budget and there's more bills. And, and um, Crystal, my lovely wife, she's right there. She here, I'm going to talk about you right now, babe. So um, she, she's my ultimate forgiveness lesson. And uh, she just ordered this lovely pizza. I'm about to eat this pizza, and I'm, like, pumped about it, right? But I got a text and said the pizza cost $38. And I'm like, how do you spend $38 on pizza? Like it was supposed to be like 20 bucks. And so then I said, okay, I recall the unconscious belief in the fear of God, fear of death, fear of atonement and fear of destruction in the form of fear of poverty. I recall this projection and I relinquish it up onto you. I no longer want any of these ego thoughts within me as mind. I'm aware that Jared, his family, friends, and all beings in this illusory world are immortal spirit. These illusory bodies have nothing to do with what they really are. They're perfect spirit, perfect oneness, perfect love. I, as the entire seemingly separated decision-making mind, am seemingly projecting and observing this entire illusory hologram of time and space. I am perfect spirit, perfect oneness, perfect love. I am Christ. Everything is forgiven and released. So that's what I keep in my wallet. That's like my little prayer. So every time, every time I have like this, um, this fear of poverty, like I have fear of poverty, guys. Like I, I'll admit it. I have fear of poverty. And every time the fear of poverty comes up, I just, re I repeat that. 
just over and over. Pablo told me to do that. <clears throat> it's helping. One night I went to bed and I had a lot of peace. One night I went to sleep and I was so damn peaceful. And that's progress. Okay, that's what I got. Who's next? I know, way over, sorry. <laughs> okay, who's next? I'll go. Okay, Angela. I don't really need a whole lot of time because okay. really it's been me like forgiving everything that seems annoying <laughs> or yeah. like everything, like forgiving myself. Just, I don't know. I think the big insight for forgiveness stuff was that I'm always forgiving myself. It's not if I'm forgiving somebody else, it's me forgiving myself. It's, it's like the same. <laughs> And so, like, it doesn't matter where it's directed. It's like, I just, I'll, it's almost just like forgiving, 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 forgiving. It's just kind of like this mantra that, that I, like, kind of turn on. And sometimes it'll, I'll direct it to stuff. I'll direct it, like, forgiving muscle tension, forgiving muscle tension, forgiving muscle tension, forgiving, mu like, specific stuff. But it's, it just really feel like anytime there's, like, a, ugh, ugh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like, oh, forgiving, 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 forgiving. That's it. Freaking awesome. <laughs> Man, locked in. Focused on forgiving. Mm -hmm. That's Thanks great. Angela. That's great if, if that thought comes up to you like a gazillion times a day. That's the way to do it. I don't, that doesn't happen to me. Like, I have to have something happen. And then mm -hmm. someone, and then like hours later, it's like, Someone points it out to me. Ah. And I forgive. But it's not automatic. It's like I want it to be automatic. I think it will be. Yeah, yeah it will eventually. But are you done? You want, I'm so glad you're back. I'm done. Yeah, me too. I'm really happy to be back. God. Glad you're back. Glad you're back. Yeah, we missed All you. right, who's next? I'll go next since I'm up. So I was doing the. Uh, the uh, hydrogen peroxide. I'm sorry if you can't hear me, but I can, I can hear you pretty good myself. Can you? So I was doing uh, the hydrogen peroxide, and it was like my sixth day. So I had gotten to the point where I was doing about seven drops three times a day, and it was yesterday. Was it yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, two days ago. Two days ago. Two days ago. I had to puke. So this whole cancer journey, I've not puked once. And I just had to puke. And I'm like, I felt like I had to two days ago also. So I think it is the hydrogen peroxide. And I just couldn't stop myself. So I puked. And my airway closed up, which was really frightening. And like I say, I wish I could like instantaneously forgive. I couldn't breathe. I was like, okay, I'm gonna die of suffocation instead of cancer. This is it. And I um, got my cell phone and I was like, Randy, I couldn't, well, I couldn't talk. Yeah. So I'm like, <clears throat> like 911, I want him to, him to understand 911. And he was looking at me like, not quite like that, but it yeah, like that. it was. <laughs> and my granddaughter, who's eight, was like, Papa, I think she wants you to call 911. And he's like, Relax. And I'm like, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. And finally, something she happened. Finally, it moved, or something relaxed. moved. No. <laughs> and I could breathe. Yes. And it was the scariest thing in, in my world. So now, I'm afraid to do the hydrogen peroxide because I don't want to throw up again because I have all this fluid in my lungs, which might make it difficult to throw up, maybe, or it might be anxiety, which I never used to have anxiety. And all of a sudden now I have all this anxiety. And um, so I just, that was just my forgiveness in the field is, I just wish I could forgive that. I didn't forgive that until Pablo said, just forgive that, just forgive that. And I'm like, oh yeah. yeah. So it just takes me a while to think about forgiving stuff like that. 
And I mean, it's just uh, another way of the ego trying to reinforce, man, it's really got a grip on me. You're a body. Look, you need air. You need air to stay alive. Yeah. I mean, that's like one of the most basics. Wow. <clears throat> Mom, I love you. Thank you for just being so strong. And um, thank God Pablo helped us. And um, thank you for sharing. I guess a question to Nathan too is Nathan, you've been doing the hydrogen peroxide for a while. <clears throat> you ever ha have a, the same type of symptoms when you were building up to your tolerance? No. Okay. Did you say no? No, but he's not no. answer. Yeah. Like the wor the worst time to start this is you you're challenged with chemo and cancer and yeah. your digestive system's already out of whack, and you're trying to do something new. It's punishment on top of punishment. And I, the first few days was fine. And you, you thought it was helping. And I felt like I could breathe better. Right. I felt like, but now, oh man, I'm getting oxygen. I feel like I can breathe better. Which it was supposed to do, oxygen your body. But it was making me sick because I can't eat. Right. I, I, the problem is I don't have much food in my stomach. And um, that's a challenge in itself. Right. Um, I don't know if this will be helpful, but there are, You'll, since you just read the book, you'll remember that there are multiple ways to do the oxygen therapy. So um, you might want to take a look at that again. The drinking hydrogen peroxide is not the only way well, if you want to continue to pursue it. Yeah, there's ozone. And I have had ozone done before. Um, but there's just a lot of contradiction on ozone. So I know with hydrogen peroxide, it has to go through your digestive system where ozone does not. And so it's just, again, you wanna say, the ego is saying, oh look, ozone's not gonna work because this doctor said this about it. Yeah. You know, one doctor said it kills the mitochondria. Another doctor said it's free radicals. And then you have a whole bunch of people believing in it. So. What do you do? What do you do? You listen to the Holy Spirit. Right. And that's a little bit confusing for me right now. <laughs> that, that's our time, Jared. Go ahead and go on. To yeah, I probably went over. Thanks, Mom. You're Thanks, welcome. Dan. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Who's next? I'll go ahead and go. So, and I'll just say one more comment to um, about the oxygen therapy that you know, I, I just got really sick last week. And so I also, I felt similarly, not the same that I was throwing up, but I was in a lot of pain and I was like, why the fuck isn't this working? You know? So, so I also don't quite understand it. Um, I'm continuing to do it though, because it is easy and, <clears throat> and it doesn't hurt me. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel bad when I take it. Okay. So my forgiveness in the field is um, mainly just kind of future anxiety i guess so i'm thinking about this next uh week coming up that i have where i have to do some hard work i'm gonna have an 18 hour day coming up and my dad is here visiting at the same time and we didn't quite synchronize our schedules in an effective way and so there's a, there's a possibility that he's going to be here for a few days so at some point in time during the next week and I won't be able to hang out with them and I'll be working really hard. So I've been worried about that a little bit. And then every time it comes up and I start to think about how annoyed I am with myself for not organizing that better or, or taking charge of that or, you know, doing work instead of spending time with my dad, uh, I forgive. And, you know, I think of it as like the ultimate forgiveness lesson, you know, stuff, connected with my dad and work is like some of the biggest stuff for me. So that's my forgiveness to the field. Thank you for sharing, Nathan. <clears throat> Thanks for sharing and being transparent and, and really what's going on with you and uh, big, big uh, congratulations on forgiving it all, man. That's, that's baller. Thanks. Okay. Who's next? Uh, I think I'm next. Christian. Um, 
so yeah in the past like week week and a half i kind of blew up like on friends and family like three times like i was kind of like um very easily triggered um or where in the past i might just walk away or something like that instead i kind of like reacted uh more negatively and stuff so <clears throat> i ha um but the the third blow up in particular like I noticed that I like because I've been practicing the course more and doing my like uh, true prayer and, and forgiving and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, so so it feels almost like. So the third blow up, like I, I could observe the negative behavior and I could and, and I was observing the whole situation, but kind of like desensitized in a way. And I don't think it was in a psychopathic sense. I think like I've always kind of been desensitized to a lot of things. Um, and, and so it was kind of interesting, but either way, I, I still behaved appropriately uh, immediately and and like apologized and met met my victim on their level, you know, and kind of like, said I definitely shouldn't have done that or said that and um and 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 I prayed and felt the feelings that I felt and I got silent and I prayed again and I'm just giving it time and and I'm going to make it up to the, to that person and stuff um so like piled up pretty high and so and, and uh there's a line in the course that it's like depression comes from a sense of being deprived of something you want but do not have you know so and there's a lot of stuff i want i love to live a very expensive lifestyle i like to eat out i like to like treat myself to everything like <laughs> all the time <laughs> so so from doing that for the past eight years to like not really being able to do that at all uh it's, it, it's a little frustrating right so um but yeah uh, i'm working at it um i realize that's pro um i also i need an outlet to burn that energy and that sort of like pent up stuff so i went for a long walk today um i went to the community center and asked them if they have any volunteering things going on and then later i came home and i saw an ad at that very same community center for a bartender that's what i do and uh yeah, so I went and met the, the same guy and he and he hired me on the spot and now I'm I'm doing event supervising, bartending and all this stuff there. So that's gonna be pretty fun. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Awesome, Christian. Thanks. Thanks for sharing, man. <clears throat> and then big congratulations on on catching yourself on that and um and doing forgiveness about it, you know. I mean that's what it's all about. Even even catching yourself a little bit is huge and it affects the the entire web of humanity you know i mean the contribution that you make it's great yeah totally. I, I, I it would be nice if i was able to kind of like stop myself and stuff mm -hmm. from kind of like reacting um but of course that takes work and and i realize what the problem is and i, I like for personally i would like i said i was kind of desensitized to the whole thing i didn't see christian's body or the other person's body as being like problems but then i kind of like felt like I, I kind of, I was very like cognitive of or aware of like that the other person must be devastated. So I acted accordingly that way, but then also reminded myself that that person is not even a person either. Like that person is perfect spirit and yes. doesn't, doesn't need pity or to be looked like, oh, poor them or anything like that. Cause there is no poor them out there. It's like everybody yeah. is perfect, unaltered, like unaffected spirit, you know? So that's so, vision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But level two and all. Huh? But level two and all. Yeah, but on level two. That's I'm right. sorry, I've done that and I'm going to treat that person big time. So. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Christian, and thank you, everyone, for being on. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. I need a volunteer to choose the next uh, couple Ken Wapnick videos. Uh, who wants to do it? 
it, if you feel like you'll be here, Angela, uh, next week, uh, I, th uh, I think you're the only one, uh, one here that hasn't chosen a, about 30 minutes of canned videos. I unfortunately am going to a performance next Friday. Okay. All good. I'll, I'll just do it because it's my turn now. So okay. we'll miss you, Angela, but thank you for being on this time. Thank Thanks. you. I message you, Christian, about your Saturday thing. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you all for being on. Let's unmute the lines. Have everyone say good night and God bless. Good night. God good. bless. Good night. God bless. Good night. God bless. Good night.